Okay, in this video I'm going to look at Bayes' theorem, and I'm going to do kind of a straightforward example here, uh, nothing too exciting, but then in a separate video I'll definitely do a quote-unquote real-life example, something that absolutely 100% does happen, and something that's very important, actually, and we'll talk about that in the other video. So I really like this, this, this theorem. There's, again, very interesting applications in real life of it. So, but again, to get started here, what it says is we're going to calculate the probability that some event A occurs given that the event B occurs. So you can read the vertical bar as the word given. So again, the probability that A occurs given that B occurred. To calculate this, we, we take the probability that B occurred given that we already know that A occurs times the probability that A occurred divided by the probability that B occurred. So this is one of the fundamental ideas with Bayes' theorem, is we're trying to find the probability of some event given uh, some extra information, given this extra information that we know that some other event B occurred. And that's going to be important. So let's see here. So I've got an example here. And I'm going to break this up into two parts. I'm going to do part A in this video using a probability tree, and then part B, which actually deals with Bayes' base theorem. Okay, so here's the problem. We've got three bowls, B1, B2, B3. Uh, bowl B1 has two red and four blue coins. Uh, so there's our, our uh, two red and four blue. Bowl 2 has 1 red and 2 blue, and bowl B3 has 5 red and 4 blue. So there's my lovely illustration. Okay, so bowls or boxes, whatever. Suppose that the probability for selecting the bowls is not the same, but the probability for selecting the first bowl is one-third, the probability of selecting the second bowl is only one-sixth, and the probability for selecting the third bowl is one-half. Okay, we're going to compute two things. Part A, we're going to find the probability of actually drawing a red coin. So, so suppose that's going to be the event. Your, your event is somehow you're first going to pick a box. Maybe you use like a little spinner or uh, some way you, you pick a box based on these probabilities. Then you're going to reach your hand in and pull out a coin. That's, that's going to be the event that is going to take place. So we want to find the probability of drawing a red coin when this happens. Suppose uh, you come there a little bit later. This is part B. Suppose you come there after the coin has already been drawn. Suppose you, you, you walk up there and somebody has a red coin in their hand. Well, we want to find the probability that, given that they have drawn a red coin, we want to find the probability that it came actually from the first bowl. Okay. So we can't simply say, well, that's one-third. That's the, in the initial probability of selecting that bowl. But again, now we've got new information. In part B, we know that a red coin has been drawn. We want to figure out the probability that it came from the first one. Okay, so let's do part A here. All I'm going to do is, I think I'm going to make a little, a little probability tree. So in part A, we're trying to figure out the probability of getting a red coin. And that's how I'm going to label it, just P of R. So the probability of drawing a red coin. Well, you know, if, if, you're, if you're trying to calculate the probability of this, how could that happen, you know? And this is where I just try to think exhaustively, how could I get a red coin? Well, a, a few different events could happen. I could select the first bowl, so B1, and I could draw a red coin. So I'm going to figure out the probability of selecting the first bowl and drawing a red coin. And then, well, the other ways that it could happen is we could pick the second bowl and pull out a red coin. Or we could select the third bowl and pull out a red coin. Okay, so to calculate these probabilities, the first part, well, first we would take the probability of actually selecting the first bowl. And then assuming, you know, right, we, we did pick the first bowl, we would have to figure out the probability of drawing a red coin given that we did select that first bowl. And then we'll do this for the other two terms as well. So we would figure out the probability of picking the second bowl. And then we would have to multiply that by the probability of getting a red coin given that we selected the second bowl. And then we would add to that the probability of selecting the third bowl 
multiplied by the probability of selecting a red coin given that we picked the third bowl. So again, we could just uh, uh, pick these off uh, or read these off from uh, what we had a second ago. I'm just going to make, again, a little tree diagram, a little probability tree. So let's see. What could happen is, well, I guess we could select bowl one. We could select bowl two. Or we could select bowl three. And again, the probabilities on those were different. So we said the probability of selecting bowl one was one third. So I'm going to put the probability associated with that event along that branch. The probability of selecting bowl two was one out of one sixth, I should say. And the probability of bowl three was one half. Okay, so if we select bowl one, two different things can happen. We can either get a red coin or a blue coin. Well, let's see. So if we count, we've got one, two, three, four, five. It looks like we have six coins total in the first bowl. Of those, it looks like we have one, two that are red. So there's a two-sixth probability that we'll select a red coin. And therefore, a four-sixth probability we'll, we'll select a blue coin. And we can do the same thing for bowl two. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of room here. So again, we can select red or blue. So let's see, if we are drawing from bowl two, there's one, two, three total. One of those is red. So we've got one third. Uh, there'll be a one third probability we'll pick a red coin. Two thirds we'll pick a blue coin. And lastly, from bowl three, let's see, how many do we have? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And again, I guess I, I certainly gave these in at the beginning, but... I'm just counting here. So let's see, we've got nine coins total. How many are red? One, two, three, four, five are red. So five-ninths probability, we'll get a red one. And therefore, four-ninths will be the probability that we'll get a blue one. So now to calculate, to calculate the probability... All I'm really doing is just looking at the branches that take me out to a red coin. So I'm kind of calculating the probability along that branch, right? We can go from, we can pick bowl one and then get a, a, a red coin. Or I could pick bowl two and get a red coin. Or I could pick bowl three and again get a red coin. So let me substitute all these values in. So again, the probability of selecting bowl one, that's just the first part of the branch, one third. And then the probability of getting a red coin, given that we selected bowl one, we said that that was two out of six, or two sixths. And well, and this is why I kind of like tree diagrams. All you really have to do is just multiply the probabilities along each branch, so one-sixth times one-third, and then you just add all the, the branches up. So then we'll have one-half times five-ninths, and let's see, I guess we can do this by hand. So one times two is two, three times uh, six is 18, then we'll have one over 18, it looks like plus five over 18, do the arithmetic on the top, 2 plus 1 is 3, plus 5 is going to be 8 out of 18. Those are both even, so we can divide the top by 2 and the bottom by 2. And it says the probability of us selecting a red coin would be 4 ninths. Okay, so that's the probability. So uh, a little bit less than 50% would be the probability of you selecting a red coin by by following this this procedure. So I'm going to do part B, part B, part B in a separate video, and uh, in that case, we'll actually use Bayes' theorem to figure out. Okay, so assuming again we did pick a red coin, what's the probability that it came from the first bowl?